السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم ہیئر حافظ محمد عمار کو ٹیچر فار مائکرو بایولوجی کورس کوڈ بی او ٹی این فور ون ٹو ایٹ لیکچر نمبر فورٹین انٹائٹل وتھ کیمیکل ریکوائرمنٹس آف مائکرو بیل گروتھ انکلوڈنگ آکسیجن ہیئر از دا ان سائٹ فور فیکٹرز which can affect microbial growth heat temperature ranges as we have disc- discussed in previous lecture carbon dioxide oxygen ph scale in lecture 12 we have discussed osmotic pressure in uh, we have discussed in previous lecture and light microbial growth the minimum nutritional requirement for growth and multiplication of bacteria is a water a source of carbon a source of nitrogen and some inorganic salts The water content of bacterial cells can vary from 75 to 90 percent of the total weight and it is the vehicle for the entry of all cells and for the elimination of all waste products. It participates in the metabolic reactions and also forms an integral part of the protoplasm. chemical requirements the requirements for microbial growth can be divided into two main categories and those are chemical and physical major physical requirements we have discussed in previous lectures here we will discuss chemical requirements chemical requirements include sources of carbon nitrogen sulfur phosphorus trace elements oxygen and organic growth factors there are two main types of elements major elements which uh, also known as macronutrients and some trace elements also known as micronutrients elements that make up cell constituents are called major elements over 95% of cell dry weight is made up of a few major elements which include oxygen carbon hydrogen nitrogen sulfur phosphorus potassium magnesium calcium and iron some elements which also termed as trace elements or micronutrients they are required in very minute amounts by all cells they include cobalt zinc copper molybdenum manganese these elements form parts of enzymes or may be required for enzyme function they aid in the catalysis of reactions and maintenance of protein structures very small amounts of these trace elements are found in most natural environments including water oxygen sources oxygen is present as a major constituent of our atmosphere almost about 20% of the atmosphere that is of oxygen and most life forms are dependent upon it for survival and growth the importance of oxygen to the growth of an organism correlates with its metabolism in particular with the processes it uses to conserve the energy supplied by its energy sources almost all energy 
conserving metabolic processes involve the movement of electrons through an electron transport system. For chemotrophs, an externally supplied terminal electron acceptor is critical to the functioning of the electron transport system. The nature of the terminal electron acceptor is related to an organism's oxygen requirement. Types of organisms on the basis of oxygen requirements. There are three main types aerobe, anaerobe, and microaerophiles. Micro we will discuss in detail one by one. An organism that is able to grow in the presence of atmospheric oxygen is called as aerobe. For aerobes, oxygen is often the environmental factor that limits growth rate. Ox while oxygen is poorly soluble in water and various methods are sometimes employed to maintain a high oxygen concentration in cultures including vigorous mixing of forced aeration by bubbling air through a culture as you can see in a fish tank. This is especially important in such commercial processes as the production of antibiotics and sewage treatments. Further, aerobes have three more uh, types including obligate aerobes, facultative anaerobes and microaerophiles. Obligate aerobes Almost all multicellular organisms are completely dependent on atmo atmospheric oxygen for growth. That is why they are called obligate aerobes. Oxygen serves as the terminal electron receptor for the electron transport chain in aerobic respiration. In addition, aerobic eukaryotes employ oxygen in the synthesis of sterols and unsaturated fatty acids. Anaerobes Microorganisms that can grow in its in the absence of an oxygen those are called anaerobes. Obligate anaerobes which live only in the absence of the oxygen do not possess the defenses that make aerobic life possible and therefore they cannot survive in the air. The tolerance to the oxygen is related to the ability of the bacterium to detoxify superoxide and hydrogen peroxide produced as a byproduct of aerobic respiration. In contrast, strict or obligate anaerobes like bacteroids, fusobacterium, clostridium do not tolerate oxygen at all and die in its presence. Aerotolerant anaerobes such as Enterococcus facilis simply ignore oxygen and grow equally well whether it is present or not. Aerotolerant and strict anaerobes cannot generate energy through aerobic respiration and they must employ fermentation or anaerobic respiration for this purpose. Facultative anaerobes they do not require oxygen for growth but grow better in its presence. In the presence of oxygen, they use aerobic respiration. Here is the summarized chart. If oxygen is present and microorganisms can be classified in three different types. Obligate aerobes, facultative anaerobes, 
which will be common with the anaerobic organisms where oxygen is not required aerotolerant anaerobes also present in oxygen absent similarly anaerobic organisms also classified as obligate facultative and aerotolerant there is another category micro aerophiles it doesn't matter if oxygen is present or not micro aerophiles they require oxygen levels below the range of 2 to 10% for the growth best example is campylobacter they are aerobes such as this campylobacter they are damaged by the normal atmospheric level of oxygen like 20% as they require very low range of oxygen like 2 to 10% for the growth the nature of the bacteria oxygen responses can be readily determined by growing the bacteria in culture tubes filled with a solid culture medium or a special medium like thioglycolate broth which contains a reducing agent to lower oxygen levels oxygen and bacterial growth each dot represents here an individual bacterial colony within the agar or on, on its surface the surface which is directly exposed to the atmospheric oxygen will be called as oxic where oxygen is present and you can see in obligate aerob category where maximum growth occurs where high concentration of oxygen was available uh, oxygen diffused to the media but bac no bacterial colony was found under or bottom of the tube where oxygen could not diffuse the oxygen content of the media decreases with depth until the medium becomes anoxic where oxygen is not present and you can see the obligate anaerobes they grow right in the bottom of the tube where oxygen could not diffuse and not available the presence and absence of the enzyme superoxide dismutase and catalase for each type is shown here in the table if you see facultative anaerobes they prefer the upper surface of the media where oxygen diffuses but they also grow throughout the media where oxygen wasn't available or very light concentration was available while in aerotolerant anaerobes you can see growth occurs throughout the media throughout the tube where oxygen present or not it doesn't matter the fifth category micro aerophiles they do not need much oxygen or could not or uh, no oxygen they grow maximum where very low concentration of oxygen is diffused Here is another example. Microbial group may show more than one type of relationship to oxygen. All five types are found among the prokaryotes and protozoa. Uh, obligate aerobe, microaerophile, facultative, aerotolerant, obligate anaerobes. Fungi are normally aerobic a number of species particularly among the yeast are facultative anaerobes photosynthetic protists are almost always obligate aerobes it should be noted that the ability to grow in both oxic and anoxic environment provides considerable flexibility and is an ecological advantage Although obligate anaerobes are killed by oxygen, 
they may be recovered from habitats that appear to be toxic in such cases they associate with facultative anaerobes that use up the available oxygen and thus make the growth of strict anaerobes possible for example the strict anaerobe bacterioid gingivalis lives in the mouth where it grows in the anoxic crevices around the teeth oxygen versus different factors like oxygen farms these different relationships with oxygen are due to several factors including the inactivation of proteins and the effect of toxic oxygen derivatives enzymes can be inactivated when sensitive groups like sulfhydryl are oxidized a notable example is the nitrogen fixation enzyme nitrogenase which is very oxygen sensitive oxygen accepts electrons and is readily reduces because its two other outer orbital electrons are unpaired another example is flavoproteins which function in electron transport several other cell constituents and radiation promote oxygen reduction the result is usually some combination of the reduction products superoxide radical hydrogen peroxide and hydroxyl radical toxic oxygen products these products of oxygen reduction are extremely toxic because they oxidize and rapidly destroy cellular constituents a microorganism must be able to protect itself against such oxygen products otherwise it will be killed neutrophils and macrophages two important immune system cells use these toxic oxygen products to destroy invading pathogens many organisms possess enzymes that afford protection against toxic oxygen products as shown in the figure obligate aerobes and facultative anaerobes usually contain the enzyme superoxide dismutase and catalase which catalyzes the destruction of superoxide radical and hydrogen peroxide peroxidase also can be used to destroy hydrogen peroxidase aerobe tolerant microorganisms may lay catalase but almost always have superoxide dismutase the aerobe tolerant lactobacillus plantarum uses manganese ions instead of superoxide all strict anaerobes lay both enzymes or have them in very low concentration and therefore cannot tolerate oxygen because aerobes need oxygen and anaerobes are killed by it radically different approaches must be used when growing the two types of microorganisms when large volumes of aerobic microorganisms are cultured either the culture vessel is shaken to aerate the medium or sterile air must be pumped through the culture vessel precisely the opposite problem arises with anaerobe all oxygen must be excreted this can be accomplished in several ways special aerobic media which contain reducing agents such as thioglycolate or cysteine may be used the medium is boiled during preparation to dissolve its components boiling also drives off oxygen very effectively the reducing agents will eliminate any dissolved oxygen remaining within the medium so that anaerobes can grow beneath its surface 
oxygen also may be eliminated from an anaerobic system by removing air with vacuum pump and flushing out residual oxygen with nitrogen gas. Often carbon dioxide as well as nitrogen is added to the chamber since many aerobes anaerobes require a small amount of carbon dioxide for best growth. An anaerobic work chamber and incubator. This system contains an oxygen free work area. The interchange compartment on the right side of the work area allows material to be transferred inside without exposing the interior to oxygen. The anaerobic atmosphere is maintained largely with a vacuum pump and nitrogen purges. The remaining oxygen is removed by palladium, catalyst and hydrogen. The oxygen reacts with hydrogen to form water which is absorbed by desiccant. Gas backyard One of the most popular ways of culturing small members of the anaerobes is gas backyard. Hydrogen and carbon dioxide are generated by gas pack enveloped the palladium catalyst in the chamber lid catalyzes the formation of water from hydrogen and oxygen, thereby removing oxygen from the sealed chambers. Plastic bags or pouches. They have a catalyst and calcium carbonate to produce an anoxic carbon dioxide rich atmosphere. A sufficient solution is added to the pouch's reagent compartment, patty dishes or other containers are placed in the pouch. It is uh, clamped shut and placed in the incubator. A laboratory may make use of all these techniques since each is best suited for different purposes. These are the references here from this lecture about pair. You can go through these books. I hope you will understand the relation of oxygen with the growth of microorganisms. Thank you very much.